Now, before we get to the video, if you're new to the channel, I wanted to let you know that we try to stay up to date on all things 3D printing, from filament and printer reviews to in-depth slicer analysis, as well as a plethora of how-to videos. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you can be notified every time we post a new video. Hey guys, Technivers here. What you're about to see is a beta version of a slicer that is not quite on the market yet. Now, the beta is available for download, and they would like all the feedback they can get. The primary selling point of this slicer seems to be that it slices differently than other slicers. It has a different protocol for um, basically slicing each layer. So uh, it's pretty interesting. Once we get into it, you'll note that they say when you start slicing that their slicing engine hasn't been optimized yet because they're focusing on making robust features before optimizing the actual slicer itself. So it uh, does take a few minutes to slice anything somewhat large. But we'll get into all that and all of the positives and negatives, and I'll let you know what I think about this. Now, obviously, we'll be reserving all of our harshest judgment because, as I said, this program is just in beta. Uh, everything I've tried in it so far seems to be working. I have had a couple small issues, and overall, the quality is, well, you'll see. All right, so welcome to Patheo. We're going to select our printer. The Ender 3 is in here right off the bat, so we'll pick that one. And we're going to go over to our filament. I'm going to be using just a generic PLA, so uh, they have two settings in here for PLA. One is 1.75, and the other is 2.85 millimeter. We want the 1.75 PLA, so we'll take that. Now it's saying ready to go, so we hit start slicing, and as you can see, they have this little model in here. This is their insignia, or icon, basically, uh, and we are going to print one of these. I'm going to go through some of the settings here real quick. We're going to look at the quality settings. Uh, retractions enabled. It's a little bit low, though, but we're going to run with it. These are the settings that they have specified for the under 3 with this slicer, so uh, looks like shell is pretty standard. few different things in infill that I'll play around with later. And supports look simple enough. We shouldn't need any of this model. It's pretty flat and there's really no overhang. So, um, some things we can't select with the model selected. We had to select the bed and then we can adjust. Again, I'm just checking what the generic settings are really before I change anything. And I will adjust my temperature. So I know that's a little lower than I want. So we'll start here. And good, it looks like that's it. Let's slice. It's not taking too long. This is a fairly tiny model, so... And there we have it. And you can scroll up and down through the layers. Pretty interesting. I'm actually liking the color scheme they got going on here. Uh, I don't know why I drag it back and forth so many times. It's just fun to see it appear out of nowhere. And now we're going to save the G-code. I think I will save this as Pathio Chip. Let's type that in here real quick. There we go. And it's going to my mini SD. All right. So now we're watching the first layers of these models go down. Um, this model, excuse me. And I can immediately tell. I know it's hard to see from the camera angle, but I can tilt my head down a little lower and see that there is some stringing going on, there you go, you can see it in there, and some patching. So obviously need a little dialing in to do the settings. Uh, and, and here it is on the mat when it's done. You can see in the corners especially that it has uh, created some artifacts there. And the top surface looks marred in the corners as well. So um, we're going to go back. What we're going to do is adjust those retraction settings. I said we're a little too low. We're going to change those to my standard of around 5 or 6. So let's go do that real quick. And then we will come back and print another one of these and compare. 
All right, we're back in Path.io here. I'm going to go ahead and click return. We're going to go into the quality settings, and I'm going to adjust retraction, the extraction amount to 5 millimeters, and the retraction speed to 70 millimeters per second. And we will slice again and see how that affects our print. All right, this is a lot more like it. There's no stringing going on here. The top surface looks a little bit better, although it's really wavy. It's an interesting pattern they have going on there. It's especially for a metal uh, filament. Uh, so looking at this, you can see a big difference, and I think now I'm ready to throw something a little bit more complicated at this slicer. So let's try a Technivorous coin. Right, so once again, we're back in Path.io. I'm going to go ahead and load my Technivorous coin. I'm going to do the standard reverse coin. Let's delete this first. Yes, delete. And... I'm not sure how to import. This is my first time importing a model. So I think we might just resort to the old drag and drop method. Let's do that now. No, I have an open window around here somewhere. There we go. Uh, so I'm grabbing something on my other screen. Standard STL. This is one I print very often for reviews of filaments and things like that. So let's get it in here and fire this bad boy up there we go uh, quite a bit bigger than the other one we are going to scale this down to uh, what's well, a good size well, I haven't scaled the model yet either I think that's going to be over here on the right side so there it is scale and Set this guy to 0.7. I think that's about perfect. And since we didn't mind the settings last time, I want to try this set to face. Ooh, yep, it's exactly what you think it is. It works pretty well. Okay. All right. Um, I'm really going to mess with the rest of those. Just double checking my settings real quick. I'm not too familiar with this software. Um, you know, for being in beta, I'm surprised I haven't seen more bugs out of it yet. It seems to be running pretty well, even though it does pop up with a little survey asking you, uh, has this worked for you? Has this worked for you? Uh, I'm kind of curious if it'll do that again, because the first time it popped up, I didn't see any bugs, and I have since they asked me those questions. So, um, everything looks to be in order. The model settings. I haven't changed any of those. Okay. And we'll go ahead and slice. All right, and here is our preview. We can go ahead and zoom in. Looks like it's going to look pretty good, although there may be some holes in the lettering in the top surface there. We shall see. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So this coin, though, it came out pretty decent. Like I said, there is some gapping in the top in the lettering there. Uh, the layers look all right. It's a very interesting way it laces the layers together. I want to play around with that a little bit more. But, uh, yeah, uh, pretty good in those tight little corners for those letters. So let's throw something a little more complicated yet at this thing. All right, so let's get this coin out of here. And I have another file in mind. This is a piece I print quite often. Uh, it's a pawn for an Egyptian chess set. Let me just dig it out here. Somewhere, there it is, Egypt chess. No, no, total width. All right, back up, Egypt chess. There we go. Let's grab the pawn. So it is the smallest, and we will try that one. Drag and drop. And there it is. A 
looks pretty good all in all I'm enjoying it we are going to scale it as well whoa not bigger smaller quite small in fact oh, gotta select it we're gonna make it even smaller than that let's do half scale 0.5 well what's going on here select the model select scale select 0.5 okay there we go just stay there I'm gonna turn on support and we're gonna slice and maybe three four five weeks later we'll have something no Any second now, it's going to throw this error about how slicing is taking too long and it wants to know if you want it to continue slicing. So at a certain point, it kind of just gives up and it knows that you're getting irritated. It's kind of funny. Let's see if it pops up here, if it actually completes the slice. Any day now. Any day. Alright, so here we go. This was the first model. I printed this at 0.5 uh, as far as scale, so it's half the size that it normally is. And as you can see, there's a large defect here in the base of the model, and it came apart completely when taking the supports off. It does look pretty detailed, and for something so small, it actually came out really well if it weren't for those few minor flaws. I also printed a larger one, thinking that might help a little bit, and it's still kind of wobbly in the middle. You can see it didn't print underneath anything in the abdomen area. So the only thing holding it up is the infill. And it still has these openings in the outside of the shell. So it shows potential and it's promising, but not quite there yet. Now, what have we learned here? Well, as you can see, there is a lot going on. They do aim for a robustness of features, and they do have quite a few features. There are a lot of features that are comparable to Kira, and the interface is pretty enjoyable. Really, it's not dated or anything like that, and I'm really curious to see where this decides to go in the future. Uh, it has some serious potential. For now, though, I'm going to go back and keep playing around. I think I'm going to take and increase the shell count see if that increases the wobble of this little guy here and uh, try out a few other things because I'm enjoying the experience but this is by no means something that you must have at this point uh, like I said it's still in beta if you're into trying out other slicers and you'd like to have your feedback included on the PathIO beta definitely give it a shot uh, try downloading it pathio.com it's not hard to find uh, click on the download link and you will be in business so it's definitely worth trying if you're into tinkering and things like that or you want to have your voice heard or have a great idea for a component for a slicer maybe someone you just never thought of before uh, which is rare all, all of the features are pretty common but uh, I encourage you to get involved and check it out and if you're happy with Kira by all means just stick with Kira but when this comes out full term um, It'll definitely be worth a look, so stay tuned and keep an eye out for it. As always, this channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. Alright guys, that's going to be the end of this video. As always, thank you. I'll put a video up right here that you can check out for more of our stuff. And if you're still here and you haven't already, why don't you click right here and subscribe to the channel.